The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN Wednesday morning, just after 9 a.m. Eastern time. We've got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading, and you have markets pretty mixed right now. S&P is negative by five points. Last night, though, 10 p.m. Eastern time, you accelerate to 3883. Markets rally almost 40 points, I think. What did we get to at a high above four in the morning? Let's see what the high print is there. You're talking about a high of 3922, the low overnight 3883. So basically 1%. From the lows to the highs overnight this morning, though, from the close of yesterday, basically flat. So look at the action, right? From last night, you close out at about 39.10. You dive down almost 30 points. You trade up 40 points. You give up 20 points, and you basically come into the opening bell almost flat. NASDAQ 100, volatility continuing yesterday. You were at about 12,200. You trade down to an 11,921 price point. Same time frame, at about 10 p.m. Eastern time last night. You're trading basically flat right now at 12,021. We get the Dow negative by 50 points this morning, 31,117. Bitcoin, you talk about an acceleration, man, from 19,800, 18,360 overnight. We're trading right now technically positive on the session, but boy, that was quite a sell-off yesterday. Bitcoin, putting Bitcoin on the daily, decisive break, man, even well below where we were on June 30th, 18,360. And backing this up even further, I mean, you are through everything from where this thing rallied in 2020. You're talking about back to almost two years ago, December of 2020. That's before you got that double peak up to 69,000, up to 65,000 back in April of last year. Now, this thick blue line here on the chart, that is where futures went live. And you got to go back even further than that. We'll take it to a does a five-year get us there? Five-year gets us there. Futures go live December of 2017. And as you see, below where they went live, below the recent lows of June, dicey scenario. Now, we're back above that area, but you just made a low of 18,360. The previous low was 18,525. So we actually got below that level. Be interesting to see how today goes. S&P is still sitting at 3,900. We got a lot of currency action. We got a lot of commodity action. There's your weekly on crude. Let's put it back to a daily for the year. And we got a decisive break in crude as well. We got currency action all over the place right now. Crude off 1.5% impacting, I should say, currencies all over the place. Quite a decisive break. We'll be talking to our man Teddy Kegstack coming up at 40 past the hour. So about 30 minutes from right now, we always talk some crude. We'll talk some currencies as well. Gold contract sitting down about $3. Now, here's, here's what I will say about gold. For you gold bulls out there, we're at a pretty decent area for support in gold, and you're going back more than two years. Really, you could go back. You could say that this got into that acceleration for that consolidation area of about 1700 to 2000 You basically got into that area, which is remarkable, right after the pandemic. Now, this is where it actually traded lower from. Let's just zoom in on this for a second, all right? Starting off the pandemic in 2020, gold, and this doesn't mean this is going to be the case, folks, but you have a dollar surging. We're going to go over currencies. Pretty interesting how, how uh, important is probably a good word currencies are right now to everything going on. I didn't used to do currencies in kind of the top of the show market wrap as we jump around. But boy, you got to go over them. You got to go over them with what they're doing today. We're going to talk to our man Kevin Hinks coming up at 18 past, so eight minutes from right now. Kevin said yesterday, I'm going to ask him again today, seems point on with the action so far. This week's going to be about currencies, man. It's going to be about currencies, how they move, and they are moving today. Now, back to gold. Okay, gold, you sell off on March 9th. This is the weekly chart we're looking at here, okay? Gold tanks with every other asset across the globe as the pandemic begins. March 9th, you tank from, where do you tank from? 1,700, an area of resistance, potentially turning into an area of support, okay? So, you trade lower, what happens? You plow right through that area. Now, point being, 
We've been in 1700 price range since April of 2020, folks. Two and a half years. That's been an area of support. Yes, you can break below it, but at least if you break below it, you have a plan. Maybe you set your stop somewhere below this. Maybe you even give it everything it has in terms of below any type of low. 1673 is the low from March of 2021. 1671 is the low of June of 2020. Before that, you're talking about price action. 1666 is where you go for April 2020. And 1666, what is that? It's only about $45 below where we're trading at right now. Not that bad when you think about the play to the upside, even if you're just playing uh, to the top of that consolidation. Now, here's what I'll say. Let's jump. Uh, well, before we do, let's go to notes and bonds first because there's a decent pullback. There's your weekly. Let's put it on a daily to see the full context here. We'll zoom in. You're talking about since August 2nd, folks, it has been lower price and higher yield coming at you in a big way. Now, this morning, a little bit of a reprieve in terms of we were as low as 115.13. You're up to 115.25, quite a sell-off yesterday. You back things up, and it happened pretty much pre-market. But 7 a.m., yeah, 7 a.m., you were up at about 116.10. So you had the 10-year trade down almost an entire full point from where you were at 7 a.m., to where you were at about 10 p.m. yesterday's action. Okay, let's jump over to the dollar index. DXY, 110.78. I mean, this thing is just, it's across the board, man, but look at this action. From August 11th, you were at 104, folks. Remarkable, and this is a nice example of sometimes how an area of resistance turns into an area of support, right? What happens, you accelerate to about 105, you give it back a bit, you come through that area, you come back, and where do you come back through? Two, you come back to 105. Now, maybe you would've come back to this area, but you're talking about an area between 105 and 105.70, and what happens? You bounce right in that area at 104.64, and you're up pushing 111 almost on the dollar index. Now, we talked about gold. Okay, we talked about gold potentially being at the bottom of a consolidation. If you expect gold to bounce, folks, you would like to see some pullback in the dollar yen. And you don't want to see this thing go from 140 to 145 over a period of two days. Now, here's what I'll say. The yen going from 140 to 145 over a period of two days and the gold contract over that time trading from 1735 to 1708 you could see a much larger move, maybe, usually, outside of these types of circumstances. You ever see a five-point range in the yen, and maybe we'll ask our man Teddy about this, uh, because I would expect gold should probably be getting punished even further with what's been happening with currencies, with, with, with what's been happening with the yen. In particular, we jump over the euro. All right, you're going to see much of the same, man. Euro, what are we at right now? 98.9, the euro, lower price. Uh, in terms of below parity, below 99 now. There's your daily. We put it on a five-minute action. And yeah, you're challenging basically the lows we had of yesterday, 98.6. We're at 98.9. That's where you were early Monday as futures were trading over the Labor Day weekend. Euro US dollar there. And we jump to the pound. US dollar as that continues to get clobbers. Pound's weaker, man. I just showed you. So you saw that the euro right, was back to similar areas it had been in. Euro, not quite back to Tuesday's low and sitting just above Monday. But check out the pound. You're below all of that. Pound just keeps breaking out. Pound, 114.13. You put that thing on a year daily. Whew. The only, the only savior there might be that you just could bounce off that bottom channel line, but that is quite a channel. Stay tuned, folks. We're coming back with our man, Kevin Hanks from TD Ameritrade Network. We'll be right back. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. 
everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&P futures negative by three right now. NASDAQ 100 positive by 10 points right now. Dow off 44. Pretty tame action so far, but not in the currency world, folks. We got the dollar higher. We got action everywhere. Let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hinks. Every trading day, folks, 12 noon Eastern time. Fast market from the TD Ameritrade Network right here on Tiger TV. 12 noon to 1 p.m. Eastern time. Every trading day, folks. Check it out. Kevin Hinks, good morning. Good morning, Tommy. You know, this is a market struggling yesterday with the higher U.S. dollar, which we have more of that today. The higher yields, we have a little less of that today. Yields are actually down slightly. So where yesterday, higher yields, higher dollar really weighed on the market and took any hopes of a rally kind of off the table. But they're doing less damage, if you notice, Tommy. I mean, you've got the NASDAQ actually up this morning, even with the dollar up. But yields are lower. So you may have, you may be hitting a little bit of selling exhaustion here. Remember, you, you've come down now seven straight days in some of, the, some of these indices. They're getting really close to oversold. And so you may, th th this overall market is trying to figure out who's the most hawkish, the U.S. or the Eurozone. And that'll affect the dollar. Um, Things are getting a little stretched here in terms of currencies, in terms of yields. Uh, this is going to be fun to watch play out over the next two weeks. I agree, man. You know, I uh, I woke up this morning. I'm checking out the markets, and I agree that, you know, I'm, I'm looking at the yen, Kevin. I saw, I think, 24-year low, the yen, and it's pushing even as we're speaking, man. You're pushing 145 this morning. Even from where we were, it's remarkable. August 2nd, you were at 130, and this thing was already on fire. Uh, some of the moves, though, not as exacerbated as they could be. Even I look at gold. Gold usually gets, you know, hammered when you have a strong dollar like that, especially versus the yen for whatever reason. And gold pull back 20 bucks, maybe 30 in more normal times. And not a great word, but I think people can understand. In more normal times, Kevin, you had this type of currency action. 
you'd see some larger impacts. Uh, you know, I'm a gold trader. We got the gold report, of course. So I'm always in tune with that. My dad, that thing used to get clobbered, man. So is that something to the similar degree of what you're talking about? Is in we're seeing some pretty hefty moves, but not quite the reaction that you normally see. Maybe in the market just kind of a little exacerbated and, and at a potential turning point as you, you get up to some pretty parabolic highs, especially in this currency market. Yeah, I mean, let's talk about the two things you talked about. Number one, the Japanese yen. Well, Japan has come out and remained dovish, right? And in the relationship trade between the U.S. dollar, which is our central bank is extremely hawkish, their central bank in Japan is extremely dovish, you can see why that relationship is going where it is. Now, let's talk about gold. With the rising dollar, that negative inverse relationship between the dollar and gold is struggling here to hold up because it just looks like there's some unwillingness to sell gold futures any lower than here. They may be looking at some type of, you know, it touched oversold right around the, the end of August, September 1st, right around that area. And so it's been holding down here, Tommy. I mean, remember, if these are the highs on the U.S. dollar, and if the dollar were to correct any time this week, you, you should see a pretty big rebound in gold futures. So, yeah, you, you're watching those. You're right, though, Tommy, with the strong dollar, an unwillingness to sell gold, that's information that traders should realize uh, and, and pay attention to. I appreciate your take, man. Things are going through my mind. I just like running them by you sometimes to get your opinion as well. Uh, doesn't mean it's always going to play out that way. We know. But those are, they, you know, pay attention to them, folks, because they matter when those things are not moving as they normally would in more normal times. Uh, we go from that, Kevin. We are in Wednesday. As we come into next week, we get CPI data. But you mentioned it even yesterday. You said it pretty well. It's continuing today. Slow week, but maybe the currencies and the action and yields drive the action. That's it so far. But what are you guys talking about on Fast Market at 12 o'clock coming up today? Three good names to look at. Talk about Netflix. We'll trade that. And then earnings after the bell in RH. Um, like Foley will do presentation on RH, the old restoration hardware. And then we'll look at McDonald's with everything going on in the world. How is this? How is inflation? How are higher wages and all these effects on business affecting McDonald's? So we'll trade Netflix, RH, and McDonald's today. You could say two, two semi-fallen angels, at least their charts look that way, man, with Netflix uh, bouncing a bit this year. But still, boy, I got like a five-year weekly on the Thinkorswim platform, and that is quite a sell-off. And uh, Restoration Hardware almost almost does Netflix one better, trading from 744 down to 243, back to basically pre-COVID levels. Pretty remarkable with what went on with housing furnishings and all of that throughout the pandemic they come back and give it all back uh and of course mcdonald's though one of the strongest stocks man performing pretty well this year at about 254 right now they look to open down about 40 pennies well kevin we appreciate the conversation as always man uh we'll be watching at 12 o'clock today and we'll talk to you tomorrow thanks for having me on tommy have a great day Always a pleasure. Folks, tune in every trading day. Uh, you heard the three equities they'll be talking about. And we got a VIX right now jumping over the VIX, sitting at 26.95, as high as 27.80 yesterday. So you got some volatility premium in these markets, man, especially if you're looking at options. Uh, now, as Kevin mentioned, the cool part when they're going through some of these equities, folks, especially this time of the year, right? We're coming into the end of the quarter. Okay, so we got two, three weeks here low on the earnings volume before we kick it into next year for the next quarter. But what they do is that they set up trades maybe with a little bit of a longer duration, maybe a little bit of a different market bias versus the stock versus just gearing some of those trades around earnings. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see what they talk about. Netflix, Restoration Hardware, both strong companies, man, but well ahead of themselves in multiples. And McDonald's, uh, we did have some McDonald's in my newsletter at one point. Ended up selling it for a profit uh, sometime in, in the near recent past to a degree. Uh, but, yeah, you check out McDonald's, man, down to 217. You look where you open the year. You're still down $16 from that 270 area or about, so what's that, 6 7% down for the year. But you were just flat even, even for the year within the last week. So overperforming the S&P for sure, McDonald's, 254.39 uh, from Mickey D's. And they had decent earnings last year time around as well. Yeah, about a month and a half ago. All right, let's jump around and see how some of the FANG stocks are trading. Kevin mentioned it, NASDAQ 100, actually in the positive right now with everything going on. And you got Amazon basically flat as we look forward. It's going to be a big day for Apple. We'll talk about this a little bit when we got back. They have their show going to be announcing their product, 
launch uh, up about 50 cents for Apple to 155. They traded down to 153.69 yesterday for Apple. We jump over to Microsoft shares. Going to be opening up a bit. There's Microsoft. So Microsoft, one of the stocks giving the NASDAQ 100 a lift. We jump over to Google shares. Google slightly in the red. We jump over to Tesla. Tesla 273.96. Uh, let's jump to Twitter. Twitter shares 38.93 as that saga plays on. We jump back to the dollar index. Well, we got a little bit of a reprieve. In most days, this would be a huge move. When you talk about 200 ticks from where this thing was just at 8 a.m., 110.77, 110 110.78, excuse me, down to 110.59 right now. But yeah, that yen. And that's why I ask Kevin, folks, you know, pay attention to some of those relationships because what tends to happen is when the yen is this weak and when the dollar is this strong, gold priced in dollars will come down in price, especially when you have this type of move, okay? Well, that's not happening. Well, what does that mean? As Kevin said, maybe no one's willing to sell gold at 1700 because maybe they, maybe they think this is dollar peak and maybe they're not gonna sell when they know the risk reward of a dollar peaking out sometime in the near future. Maybe, right, but watch those. We'll see what happens. Stay tuned, folks, we'll come back for the open. of booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a tier one mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got markets open. You're looking at it. 
S&P open uh, negative three points right now at 3,906, just above 3,900. We were just below that level in the last hour or so. We have the NASDAQ 100, only index currently in the green, up 21 points, Dow negative by 30, Russell negative by four. Jumping back to, we're going to talk a little bit of uh, currencies. Okay, now you jump to first. Well, let's let's talk about this as well. When you talk about currencies, folks, right, and we hear a lot about currencies right now, we've been hearing a lot about currencies, all right? Whatever you thought about President Trump, he did not want a strong dollar because it's very difficult when you're dealing with a strong dollar, right? Sometimes the American companies that base their earnings off of American dollars and they're doing business in other areas of the world, they get impacted severely. But if you think about it on a global perspective that spans decades and generations, this is my opinion to everything, of course you want the currencies that you hold to be more powerful and worth more than other areas of the globe because those currencies, okay, the world, folks, it runs off technology and it runs off commodities because commodities are life, okay? You can't build anything without commodities. No matter how much technology we have going on, okay, you can't build anything without the materials that make up for it. Now, you know, chips are becoming a commodity that is gonna be one of the most important, but we're seeing it play out right now as a strong dollar will impact the earnings of American companies, no doubt about it, that could impact uh, the stock market price of those market capitalizations. But guess what? The world is in trouble right now because we're coming out of a pandemic. There's supply chain shortages. Uh, there's human capital shortages. Okay, across the globe, inflation is raging. And where are we and where is everybody else? And why are we there? Because we have a strong economy, because the Fed is not afraid right now, at least, and they're definitely late to the party, to hike and to say that they're going to do it aggressively to make sure, okay, that those inflation tendencies get under control. And why can we do that? We can do that because our economy is strong enough to handle it. And this comes back to energy as well, okay? We draw a lot of oil domestically versus Europe and the trouble that they're in. So keep it in mind anytime. It's very easy to want a weak dollar and think about how if you have a weak dollar, right, everybody's going to want your stuff, okay? But everybody are, just wants your stuff because it's so cheap because their dollars and their currencies are worth so much compared to yours. And in the long run, that is not a recipe for success, man. It's playing out right now. And I don't think it's over. You know, and the market doesn't think it's over yet, man, with the way this is playing out. Now, here's where we'll finish this conversation. The market is not going to wait until the Fed completely hikes, okay? All the market has to do is figure out where the Fed is going to go and make that decision. I would say that a lot of what the Fed has said they are going to do is getting priced into this market right now, okay? These currency moves, when you have the yen going back 24 years, now I'll tell you a quick funny story about the yen, not funny, interesting story about the yen. Uh, I was very fortunate, went to an amazing high school in Dedham, Massachusetts, Noble and Greeno, and when I was there, they offered Japanese as a language. You had to take a language uh, as one of the components there. I started that school in 1992, as a seventh grader, was there for middle school and high school, uh, took Japanese for all six years. Unfortunately, don't remember a lot of it at this point because uh, I haven't used it over that time as well. But I was fortunate to take an exchange trip over to Japan, and I'm trying to remember the year, and it wasn't. But if you zoom in on the action here, I think it's going to be now. It wasn't at this area, but I remember going over there. And what was happening was, I think it was in maybe 97, okay, it was in the summer. So maybe it was sometime in 97, 98, but what had happened was, my dad was telling me, and I was just becoming aware of finance and currencies and exchanges, uh, the yen had run pretty dramatically during that time, even from where it was over the last three, four, five years ago, that I was gonna get a decent conversion rate at least where it was now in you know 89 it was well above that area but you see where we are right now folks which is crazy we are right back to then man we are back to uh 
basically right when I graduated high school, which is crazy enough, talking about June of 1998 on the yen, you go from 144, and really the acceleration happened in 2007 down to 75, up to 144. But folks, look at this chart. Look at this chart going back decades upon decades upon decades, okay? Now, yeah, we were way over there at one point, but I'm just zooming in on the action from 1988, okay? And you're pushing those levels, those levels of 160. Can we get there? Of course we can. We just traded from 140 to 145 over the last two days. Uh, but at some point, this will become parabolic. And I imagine right now, Everybody knows that Europe's in big trouble. Emerging markets are in big trouble. The U.S. is going to hike aggressively. Yields are on the rise dramatically. The dollar index is through the roof. Uh, the yen has weakened to 24-year lows, right? The, the Fed does not need to act for this to reverse, as in it doesn't need to be a cutting cycle. Okay, that doesn't mean it's going to play out, but that's how you should be thinking about it, right? When is the market going to have priced in everything they think is going to happen and not when does that stuff actually happen when does that shift actually take place no when does the market price in that that's going to take place it's a little bit of the mentality of the fed doesn't really need to raise rates if the market thinks they're going to raise rates right the fed doesn't need to hike all the way through 2023 if the market thinks they're going to and that alone pulls numbers back fast enough that inflation is tamed so wrap your head around that one. But these are pretty parabolic trends right now. We jump over. Now, dollar index isn't going to go back. Uh, yeah, it goes back to 2001. But pretty similar trajectory in terms of you have to go back almost at least 20 years to get where we were at that point, 121. And maybe that's where you get in the dollar index. Right now, we're at 110. That would be quite a move, man. And we jump over to the euro, euro US dollar, pushing 99.16. All right, s and is catching a little bit of a bounce, and we'll talk to Teddy next segment. I jumped around to some of those com com uh, currencies. There's a precursor, but I can't help it right now, folks, because there's just such m large moves in this market. It'll uh, be interesting to see where Teddy thinks. So we had a peak. Uh, are we peaking potentially? I mean, he's talked about Euro US dollar potentially in the 90 area, and don't put it out of play, folks, because we went to 98.8 like nothing, and these moves are pretty well intact right now so far. We'll see. All right. Oh, man, and look at this moving crude. All right, this is going to be a good segment coming up with Teddy. We just got an 82 handle, folks, an 82 handle. 83.49 for the price of crude right now. Let's jump around to some of the FANG stocks, see how we're opening up. Amazon catches a lift, as all the markets do right now, up about half a percent. We jump over to Apple ahead of their big day. They're up as well, about half a percent. Microsoft up six-tenths percent, and that's as you have the NASDAQ 100, all the all the big tech stocks up with the NASDAQ 100, about six tenths percent. And as we come into this break, I'm going to jump to this. Uh, yeah, this article. Now, this is talking about global stocks. OK, they're in worse trouble than the U.S. is. The U.S., of course, included Goldman talking about stocks yet to make a decisive low globally. And boy, you talk about the global gauge. Uh, that is the MSCI AC World Index, right? We're almost right back at the lows of June, man. OK, now the S&Ps are about 300 points above that price level still. Uh, not so much with the world index pushing those lows. And yeah, more pain may be to come. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be back with our man, Teddy. We'll talk some Forex, some commodities, some currencies. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. 
David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps up 16 points right now. NASDAQ 100 up 99. The Dow up 98. All the markets catching a little bit of a lift on the open. We got crude trading with an 83 handle. Let's jump over to our man, Teddy Kegstad. Folks, you can check out Teddy's newsletter, the Tiger Forex Report, right under the newsletters tab at the front page of TFNN.com. All our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee. I'm not sure there's been a time that I've at least been as interested in currencies and how they're shaping this market, and we're seeing it play out today and this week right away. Teddy Kegsack, good morning. Good morning, Tommy. So where do we start on today, man? We got some movement across the board. Uh, currencies, yen, dollar, crude with an 83 handle. What are you checking out this morning, Teddy? Where do you want to go? Uh, well, I would say, first of all, right now that you got to view what's happening currently as we're speaking, I think, as a profit taking bounce. Uh, you got to realize the markets have been open for already almost two days, even though everyone else came to work, uh, you know, or three days, actually. And now everyone came to work yesterday, you know. So we had a lot of follow through yesterday. I mean, if you look at where the bonds were at a high yesterday versus where they're at now, I mean, a half a point, half a basis dollar bounce isn't a big thing. It's right now I think they're squeezing out the, uh, the weak shorts and the weak longs in the uh, U.S. dollar right now. Yeah, it is pretty interesting, some of the relationships that are going on uh, at these like exacerbated lows and highs. Mm -hmm. uh, how about how about the yen and, and what's <laughs> going on there? I, I, I'm not sure if you just heard the segment, man, that I took Japanese. I was over there. Yen's, uh, the yen was had some volatility back then in the late 90s. And I mm -hmm. can't believe that we're basically at the price level that uh, I graduated high school in, which is crazy yeah. enough, 1998 on the yen. What do you think of this move? Are we reaching a potential peak here or 145 is pretty crazy? Oh, I think it's going parabolic, my friend. I mean, like right <laughs> now, this is absolutely ridiculous. I mean, anyone that read the report, you know, on Monday or whatever knows that we've already hit our targets. <laughs> so sure. You know, I was looking for 142 and 142 to 143 area and at least see a little bit of a breaking of, you know, on the on the rally. But this is. You know, what we've been talking about, I've, I've been mentioning the velocity of money and it's starting to really ripple into the uh, foreign markets, you know, and you got to realize Japan doesn't just deal with us, you know, so as these other countries' currencies are collapsing versus the dollar, it doesn't help them either, you know, so and I think it's being very reflective. Um, I, you know, a lot of people say that they should become hawkish to protect the yen. Well, there's a reason why they're not becoming hawkish because being hawkish causes inflation. So 
they can't go like it can't go down anymore. So they're not sure. going to go up. You know, I know people don't believe that view. Or they they follow the Fed, but I mean, look at the repercussions of what's going on with what the Fed's been doing now for a year. You know, so I mean, there's a reality. You have to. I mean, facts are facts. You know, it's not. Oh, it's a big one. Yeah. You know, and it's pretty. So. It is pretty crazy that we're almost approaching that year, man. Right in terms of mm -hmm. the final quarter of last year, the markets kind of defied the expectation, and then January first. But we're already into uh, beginning of September, and it seems like it's been turmoil and, and negative market action mm -hmm. and, and Fed anticipation, uh, and we're almost approaching like a year from that type of, of mentality. Right, right. Well, remember a year ago was when it's been, and I was already preaching get long the U.S. dollar yen is going to be a big trend. I mean, I. <laughs> And what's going on over the past couple of days just really is, is, I think, solidifying my view that, yeah, the, the velocity of money is, is is actually collapsing, you know, and it's because of what's going on. Look at how the bonds have traded just since Sunday night. You know, I mean, like we had a lot of market action going from Sunday night into Tuesday morning, let alone yesterday's trade, you know. So, yes. I mean, and this is without the numbers. This is just a free trading market. This is without the Fed meeting. It has not occurred yet. We know what the bias is. You know, we know we have CPI coming out. I bet you CPI will be very similar to last uh, last month. It's probably going to be still higher, but it's not going to be at the increasing rate that it has been at. But that doesn't mean that it's not inflation is, be, is being curbed. It's just that velocity of inflation is is being diminished a little bit, you know. So, but the trend remains intact. So I would I would use a lot of caution right now fading the dollar. I think you want to be in a buy dip scenario. And right now today, I, I wouldn't doubt it if today we see another snap back. And you could see the 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 yen making new highs, the Swiss franc making or U.S. dollar Swiss making new highs, the euro. They're waiting on to see if the ECB is going to start to become hawkish. I don't think they can afford to be. To be quite honest with you, I think they're going to try and put as much pressure on our Fed to put the brakes on because these central banks know that if they start doing that, it's just going to hurt them even more globally because all it's going to help them is against the U.S. dollar. So, OK, if their import or their exports, meaning our imports, that helps them becoming hawkish. But then they screw all the other co countries that are being you know, decimated by their currencies valuations. Yes. You know, so the, the Fed is creating this whole turmoil. You know, the reality is 80 percent of all transactions are done in U.S. dollar globally. What, what, what is the one what is the who has to make the move? Yeah. We have to make the move, you know, yeah. and that's not happening. You know, at least I, I would be stunned. I mean, do you think the chairman Powell listens to what I'm saying right now? <laughs> if, he does, <laughs> if he does hear it or gets somebody whispering at it, he's like, I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear that. That's nonsense. But I'm not an economist. So what do I know? I just all I know is I make money off of the trends with my points of view. <laughs> yeah. Listen, and we got some trends, man, for sure. Uh, how about the trend in crude? We got an 83 oh, yeah. handle today. And so normally, right, before mm -hmm. 83, geez, 82.93 I got down to, we're trading at 83.67 right now. Now, usually, Teddy, right, uh, the U.S. is an oil producer, so if mm -hmm. we had lower oil prices, normally that would be hurting the dollar, right, versus maybe mm -hmm. even versus the yen in particular. Mm -hmm. But is that mm -hmm. just not a big enough factor right now with crude? Is that or is that a relationship that plays out? Am I correct on that relationship usually? You are. You are 100 percent correct on it. Now, here's what I think why what's happening in crude. Um, I live in a very dense area, the Chicagoland area. We just had Labor Day weekend. Labor Day weekend is typically, you know, the, the parking lots aren't as filled up at restaurants. You don't need to worry about reservations because a lot of people are out of town. You know, they're traveling. Um, but the reality is Labor Day weekend wasn't really any different than any other normal weekend around lately, you know? So, and what I have noticed is that traffic is very thin. People aren't driving around. Like if I go shopping now, like I can go now at like six o'clock to Walmart in the evening and I don't have to worry about a mess of people being there. The parking okay. lots are not they're not empty, but they are not full by the way they usually are. You know what I mean? So people are not running around. They're doing all their shopping in one loop. They're not going out, coming back in. You know what I mean? I think that the reason oil is, is right now riding the lows is because the demand in the U.S. is shrinking because of the usage, not because people don't want to drive, but because they're they're just they're doing that kind of a thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, how many parents do you think are saying, OK, kid, you, you know, they're, they're teenagers just drive around and, and go run around and see their friends all afternoon. You know, they're going to be like, hey, either you get a job and pay for that gas or you can forget about it. You know, sure. so I mean, and I think that's the reality is that, <clears throat> that, that right now the demand, I mean, is just not being 
it's not being the way it normally would be because of the pricing. You know, people are scared. They, they still have to, when they go shopping, they're like, okay, here's the choice. Do I drive around and just waste time and money or do I pay for these groceries that are now 50% more? You know, oh, the grocery so. deal, man. Let me tell you, I've been talking to friends. I don't really use Insta. I used to, I was using Instacart often and especially during the pandemic and, um, you know, a baby on the way and all that stuff. But mm -hmm. when you add percentages on percentages on percentages, man, it's just mm -hmm. rationalizing it uh, very difficult at this time, especially with the rising number and that the uh, food prices. It's a big one. Right. Well, Teddy, we appreciate it as always, man. Always an adventure. We got crewed at 8330. We got some action. Uh, can't wait to see where we are US one week from. dollar bull is not going away, baby. <laughs> dollar bull. Got to love it, man. King dollar. Teddy, we appreciate it, man. Have a great week. We'll Thanks, talk to you next Tom. Wednesday. All right. Take Folks, care. Folks, check out the Tiger Forex report under the newsletter tab. We'll be right back after the break. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, the Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with the Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In the Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. .com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got the S and P's up about ten points right now, trading at thirty nine twenty one. We were as high as about thirty nine thirty, so a little bit of volatility to the upside. You give it back a bit. Uh, we're trading right now, basically where you were at about four a.m. Eastern time. Nasdaq one hundred. We're up about seventy points right now. We check out Apple. 
ahead of their big event, up about six tenths percent, one fifty five forty one. Amazon shares this morning up about three tenths percent. You heard the stocks that they'll be talking about, folks. Folks on fast market, we got Netflix. They're up one point one percent so far this morning. Talking about restoration hardware, they're up about one percent as well. And then they're talking about Mickey D's. And there's a pop for you, up 1.4%. Mickey D's, not a bad dividend there as well. And this thing's held up just uh, super strong this year. You look at where we came into COVID at 212. You're up, what, 25% from that price level on a strong dividend stock. So you think about a risk reward coming out of the pandemic. You're sitting at 257.90, 212.38. The one thing I'll say, folks, we talked about commodity prices. Uh, so I was mentioning Instacart. Instacart, an absolutely great service but it's expensive as heck. And when it you have commodity prices, you have food prices rising at an obscene level in some degrees, and then what Instacart does is they basically price each item up approximately 10% or something. So if something's $5 at the grocery store, you're paying $5.50 on Instacart. But then of course they add a fee, and then you gotta tip the driver, because of course you do, because they're working for their income as well. And it's just an obscene amount of money. Now, here's what we ordered, Uber Eats. It's becoming a similar deal with Uber Eats, man. I used to be a huge Uber fan, and I still am on that stock after it's gotten decimated to a degree. But they have some problems as well, man, because I ordered Chipotle on there. Now, Chipotle is a little pricey. Folks, I ordered three burrito bowls. Okay, yeah, I had a guac to one of them or something like that. Nothing crazy. Okay, three burrito bowls. Maybe I had a guac to one of them. There's a few dollars here and there. $60 to get delivered. Six zero. That's not going to fly, man. You know, I did it because it was the weekend, but uh, that's not going to fly at all. So they got some issues dealing with rising costs and how that's going to impact people's ability to pay that extra fee for convenience. Stay tuned, folks. We got a man, Basil Chapman. He's coming up next. Steve Rhodes at 11, Fast Market at 12, Larry Pesavento, Dave White, Tom O'Brien. Have a great Wednesday, everybody. <laughs>